So, the G-Made bomb. Does it live up to its name? Let's find out. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be looking at my new uh, G-Made bomb. It's the GS02F version. So it is the most recent version, but it has been out for about a year now, maybe a little bit longer. So I'm going to do this slightly differently today. Normally I would just kind of ramble through what my thoughts are about this particular truck. Uh, but today I'm going to try and be a little bit more um, organised with my thoughts. So to that end, I have actually written them down for once. What I'm going to try and do is sort of put a bit of a score against this truck. Uh, so I'm going to do it as a, a scored review or score it out of five uh, over a few different categories, re referencing the other builds that I've done or the other trucks that I've got um, or had experience with if, if I've had some particular experience with them. Uh, I'm fully aware that I don't have experience of everything. You know, I've never driven a TRX4 full size one. Um, or one tenth one. You know, I haven't really had much to do with axial. Most of my uh, most of my experience so far has been with uh, Element and a SEMA. But hey, you know, it, it makes for a good comparison. Element are a popular truck. I think a lot of people uh, know a lot about the the Element stuff. You know, they know it's a, a good value brand, but it's good solid stuff usually. Uh, so I think it's a, a reasonable um, position for comparison. So if this thing gets five out of five at the end, that does not mean it's the best truck ever. It just means it's the best one I've driven. So a little bit of an overview of the details. So it is a Ford Ranger cab, uh, it comes unpainted, it comes with these nice hard plastic details uh, and obviously a caged back. So it has a two speed transmission um, and a really nice forward weighted, uh, forward, sorry, forward motor mount uh, and then a, a sort of transfer case if you like. Um, and that gets the weight nicely far forward. It's right up next to the servo. We'll show you that in a second. Uh, it does come with wheels and tires, which is nice for a kit. Um, that's not always the case. Sometimes you have to buy your own. The wheels it comes with are not these though. These are some nice trail ones that I brought uh, afterwards because the ones that it comes with um, are just sort of standard glue on. They're not beadlock wheels. Uh, and actually these tires that it comes with, the MT1904, uh, are apparently a pretty good tyre, so I didn't want to glue them onto a plastic wheel and mean I could never use them on anything else. Uh, so I have upgraded the wheels. I originally put the Element uh, Ecto plastic ones on because they look exactly the same as the uh, original ones that came with it in terms of that eight hole design. Um, but unfortunately they kept sort of losing the bead. So I have put these uh, trial um, kind of slot mags almost uh, on there. And, and I think they look really nice. They're, they're in keeping with the original intention. So uh, like I say, uh, it does come with these uh, MT1904 tires um, and they do seem pretty good. They've, they're nice and gnarly. They're quite soft and compliant. They're not super sticky in terms of stickiness, um, but you know, the run I gave them, which I've got some running footage from later on, uh, it did pretty well. Uh, it doesn't include the spare wheel. You'll see I've got a spare wheel on the back. Um, I've actually used one of the plastic wheels that it comes with and then just stuck a uh, spare Louise Champ on there that I had. Uh, it comes with pretty much all of the decals that you'll see on it. I, I've only added one or two extra, mostly on the um, the fuel tank actually. Uh, and they're pretty nice, you know, they look quite good. You get two different options uh, in terms of these sort of side stripes. There's a, there's a kind of real multiple stripe version and then there's this one big thick stripe. I thought that was more in keeping with the style of the body, so that's what I went with. I actually reused the multiple stripes uh, on the bonnet. The transmission comes with all metal gears. Um, I think they're hardened steel, uh, with the exception of the um, differential gears, which are sintered steel. And I have seen a couple of reviews online um, where they've given way. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Hopefully that doesn't happen. I've, I've also seen plenty of people using it who haven't had that problem. So that's an important point. From the box, obviously because it's a kit, it doesn't include any electronics, but it does include a pinion. So it comes with a 13 tooth pinion. They are 32 pitch, 0.8 mod pinions. So pretty standard, all the axial ones and things like that should fit it as well. Uh, unfortunately, that means it doesn't fit any of the element ones that I have a few of. Uh, and with the motor that I went with, and we'll get onto this in a little bit, I, I, I installed the, um, the Reedy 14 turn uh, brushed motor that came in my Ecto and frankly it was a bit too much uh, so 
it, you know, it would pull wheelies pretty much uh, in second gear. And, you know, in first gear, it meant that there was not really much torque in there. Um, so it was stalling out a bit. So I've swapped that down to an 11 tooth pinion. Um, and it's still stalling out a little bit. So I think I need to rethink my motor choice for it. But uh, other than that, you know, it, it, it's okay. I also went with a uh, ISDT ESC70 um, that I had spare already. Uh, the servo, I've put in an Etronix servo. I did buy that one specifically for this truck. Really pleased with that so far. Um, may do some kind of a bit more detail on that another day, but that's a, that seems to be really good. It seems to be strong. Uh, it's nice and fast as well, so quite pleased with that. Um, and then there are a few other things that I've swapped out. So I have put a metal servo arm, for example, on it. I've added some extra spotlights. I've added some scale bits. Under the bonnet, or under the body, let's have a look under there. So what have we got? Uh, it is a hinged body, which I really like. You know, it's it's pretty good under there. It's it's really well set out, I think. Like I say, forward motor mount up here next to the servo. Uh, we've got the two-speed transmission, battery mount, transverse battery mount, um, quite nicely far forward and as low as it can go. Uh, the shift servo, obviously the transmission, and the receiver box in the back there, which is quite nice as well. Uh, obviously it does come with uh, wheel arch liners, which is really good. And the sort of the thing that makes this one stand out from the other, um, G made uh, kind of GSF GSO2Fs uh, is this cantilever rear suspension, and that's what kind of drew me to this truck in the first place. I thought, oh, that's something a little bit different. I'm going to try that out. That cantilever suspension is pretty cool actually, and it works quite well. I thought it might be a limiting factor because it's quite a short travel, or it appears to be, but it actually works pretty well. I think the springs are a bit too stiff for my liking, both front and rear. You can see there's Kind of quite a bit of bounce back in those so you know i think it needs slightly softer springs uh, and maybe slightly thicker oil just to just to make that a bit more compliant and a bit softer but in terms of the um flex that you get from it you know it's pretty good it gets it gets a decent amount of flex in there um it's a pretty good lift pretty good level of lift and similarly with the back as well is is pretty good uh, and it articulates really well but as you can see, the sort of suspension's a little bit, I mean, it's almost SCX24 like in its bounciness. So I have some softer springs. I've ordered those already uh, and I'm gonna fit those after I've done this video. Uh, it doesn't come with the interior. I have added a cheap eBay interior um, just because it sort of felt like that was the thing that was missing to me. You know, if you're gonna use the wheel arch liners and cover up your electronics that way, uh, it's nice to not have to see them through the windows. Uh, and it just makes it look a bit more scale. I will get a driver for there as well at some point. Um, <clears throat> you never know, John Wick might finally get his job uh, as a driver. Uh, so it has a nice flat skid. It does sit down from the, the rails um, and they are sort of stamped uh, steel C-channel rails, fairly standard stuff. Uh, but you do get these nice uh, aluminium links, uh, which I quite like. Uh, we have these sort of angled diff cases as well, which means uh, hopefully that that's a little bit smoother in terms of its uh, ability to slide over stuff. So the pumpkin is is angled, diff covers angled up. That is a metal diff cover as well. The aluminium links are really nice, but um, I don't know what they'll be like in terms of longevity. I mean, aluminium is quite a soft metal, obviously. Even the harder grades of it are still quite soft. So um, not sure how long that they're going to last. Uh, but you can buy steel upgraded ones. Uh, and they were quite nice to build these links actually because uh, they come with a set screw rather than a threaded rod so uh, you, you know they were, they were really easy to get to the right length just sort of screw them together and they were good to go so i was really pleased with that actually that worked really well uh, as part of the build uh, steering angle is really good uh, let's have a look as you can see it's got a good sharp good strong steering angle there um really quite impressive actually and out on the trails as well, I did really notice how good that steering was, especially compared to some of my other vehicles, uh, even the ones with overdrive. Um, it was a lot better, actually. It was a really good, sharp uh, steering angle. Uh, so things that aren't included, fairly standard stuff. There's no servos included in the box. Um, like I say, I've gone with uh, the Etronics in the front and just the uh, Amazon Special for the shift servo because that doesn't need to be anything particularly uh, beefy. Or fast either. 
Uh, I've used the, it doesn't come with a motor. Like I say, I've used the one out of the uh, Ecto. So that is a Reedy Power uh, 14 turn, five slot, 550 motor. It's all numbers. Again, quite pleased with that. It's a bit, it's a bit fast, I think, for this one, and, and it could probably do with a bit more torque. Um, so I've geared it down a little bit, as I say, but and that's helped, but it's still not brilliant. Uh, you obviously don't get a transmitter and receiver, you would need to add that. It doesn't come with the LEDs uh, for the lights, but it does come with light buckets for the front as part of the front bumper setup. Um, you don't have to use those, uh, you can just use, um, you can just put stickers, you know, the stickers that they come with. Uh, these particular ones uh, have a kind of, um, a sort of light lens printed onto them, which is really nice, and obviously they're chrome backed with the light buckets that it comes with. But those light buckets and the bumper are all one piece, so you have to cut a big hole in the front of the body, push the bumper through, and then it sort of all just sticks into place with some really good quality sticky tape, actually. Um, but the lenses are, you know, the labels, sorry, the stickers are quite um, translucent, so the, the lights do shine through them nicely. If you don't want to put the LEDs in there, there is a different set of stickers that you can use, uh, which just has a more detailed looking light lens on the front of them. Uh, so that it doesn't look like there's just an empty light bucket behind it. So that's quite a nice touch, gives you the option, uh, but it doesn't come with the LEDs. So I've had to buy those separately, uh, but I've gone with some, just some warm white LEDs uh, in, the, in the main buckets. And there are buckets for these two marker lights and, and turn signals. Uh, and I've just put amber, amber lights in those. However, that said, they are on all the time. Um, so they are effectively marker lights, but nobody wants turn signals anyway, apparently. I quite like them, but I'm not supposed to like them, apparently. <laughs> anyway, um, of course you will need your own batteries, you'll need your own charger, uh, and that's it. And that will get you up and running with the bomb. Let's get on to the review side of things. So this is gonna be my new kind of uh, way of trying to do these things where it's where it's appropriate. In some cases it won't be, but I thought it might be appropriate in this one. Um, I've got enough uh, experience now, I think, to make some of these comparisons. You know, I'm not by any means um, the most experienced guy out there with uh, with these crawler trucks. I've only been doing it for a couple of years. Uh, but I've had a few through, I've seen a few, I've built a few. Um, so I've got a reasonable idea how it compares to those, and that's what I'm using as my basis for comparison. So please do remember that. So the first thing, looks. Uh, the superficial score, shall we call it. Um, I think this is a really good looking rig, actually. I think it looks really nice. I think they've got the styling right. Um, you know, I like the chrome bits, although they are hard plastic, and I've already broken one of these. Um, I like the chrome grille, you know, I think, they've, I think they've got the looks right. The cage back is brilliant, I think that's fantastic. Let's flip this around so you can see that. There we go, so I, I really like the caged back. Uh, I've added these extra spots on the top, they don't come with it, of course, because you don't get any LEDs. Uh, and I did have to paint up the fuel cell, but again, I think that was part of the fun uh, of, of putting this build together, you know, it's just a little bit of extra stuff to do. The spare wheel doesn't come with it, uh, but there is a spare wheel, proper spare wheel mounting position that it does come with. Uh, so that is screwed on. It's not just it's not just kind of thrown in there. So in terms of looks, it's really good. I like the light buckets. I like the decals that come with it. I like the style of them. <clears throat> they are a bit thin though, and that should be pointed out. So let's just flip you around again. So particularly these side stickers, um, the big the big sort of white bits. Now it doesn't matter that they're thin on the black and all these other bits and pieces, but where it's white, if you get a thin decal, that means the colour from the body kind of shows through it a bit. Uh, and that, that is the case here. It's not terrible. Um, and it's not the end of the world. Uh, but it is a little bit of a drawback and they are quite thin. Uh, the hard plastic details are nice. So the rigid, rigid door handles, rigid mirrors, uh, but you know, they could do with some sort of way of not being rigid, I suppose. <laughs> they could do with folding in some way or something. Uh, like I say, I've already snapped one of these uh, in a bit of a tumble. And the other thing that I thought was super weird about this, and I just don't understand it, and I, I've swapped it now and I've bought the, the mirror inserts that are proper glass mirrors. They give you this lovely shiny chrome mirror thing, and then they give you a really naff silver sticker to stick in inside it for the lens. Why? You know, just make the, make the piece, the chrome piece, really nice and shiny and a flat in the inside, 
And then you're done, aren't you? You've got a mirror. But that was a, so that was a weird one. Um, so, you know, I had to spend an extra $3 or something to buy the, the mirror inserts. <sighs> Strange. So I'm going to give it four stars for looks. Uh, I think it looks great. The sliders are nice. The front bumper is really soft plastic. The cage is quite soft plastic. That's probably going to be an advantage, actually, uh, especially in the UK where it's cold. That means it's less likely to break. But, uh, you know, overall, there's no interior, so I've got to mark it down a little bit for that. So four stars. You may or may not agree. This is my subjective opinion. Right, let's move on to the next category. The next category I'm going to go with uh, is performance. So, honest answer, I think this is really good. Really good. It performs really, really well. It's not a pure comp rock crawler, okay? Um, but then you wouldn't expect that from looking at it. It's a trail truck, but it's a trail truck that can handle itself on the rocks. I've got some video, I'll put that in the corner, uh, of it doing a pretty good job uh, at some local rocks near, nearby, uh, over in Leicestershire. And, you know, it was pretty good. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't quite keep up with the two guys that were there with their super LCG rigs. Um, I wish I'd taken the G-Speed that day. But actually, it was a lot of fun, and it was really good fun to drive. Um, the cage weight, and the, even the, the spare tyre, I did it all with the spare tyre on the back, all that extra weight. And it didn't really feel like it was there. It didn't feel super tippy. Um, and even with this sort of bouncy, springy suspension, it didn't feel super tippy, so it performs really well. You know, I'm putting this on par with the Ecto. Right? And that's quite a bold statement. It doesn't crawl, doesn't rock crawl quite as well as the Ecto, but it does trail better than the Ecto. And I think the Ecto and I've been saying it to a few people who've asked me, it's probably the best all-rounder that you could buy because it's really capable on the rocks and it's pretty good as a trail truck as well. Whereas this one is definitely better as a trail truck because it's got that two-speed, um, you know, it's got that slightly more trail look about it and what have you, but it's still really good at crawling and climbing and it's very composed and very predictable. Part of the reason for that is uh, that two-speed transmission also has counter-rotating out drives so the drive shafts front and rear spinning effectively spinning opposite directions so they're counteracting each other so you don't get torque twist or it removes a lot of the torque twist so where the ecto or <clears throat> one of the other element trucks you know on a steep climb that torque twist will kick in and it will lift off a front wheel uh, and then of course you're losing traction at that point you don't get that with this. You've got that extra traction because it keeps the wheels down. And that is a real bonus for it, in my opinion. It also, as you've seen before uh, in the overview, has a really good steering radius. And naturally that helps as well when you're climbing because it does help you get onto um, things a little bit better and turn in tighter turkles. So that was really good. And it's got 14% overdrive straight out the box. So the gearbox that it comes with has 14%. You don't get the option to change that like you do with the Element ones um, out of the box. You can buy the optional gears. They're not that expensive. But I think 14% is really good. It doesn't seem to affect the overdrive. It doesn't seem to affect its trailing ability um, at all. Um, it might do over time. It might wear the tyres a bit quicker. But uh, overall, it works really well. But what it does do is it really helps it in climbing situations. Really good in those. Yeah, the tyres, really good. These MT1904s, I would probably go out and buy these, actually, for other vehicles. Um, I was really impressed with those. They are certainly 100% better than any of the other ready-to-run tyres I've had. The underside is nice and smooth. The, you know, the, that flat skid on the bottom, really good. Uh, as you can see, the ground clearance is pretty good as well um, under there. So you're not going to high centre too often. So overall, performance, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5 for what it is. So for a trail truck all-rounder that can climb, I'm gonna give this a five out of five. I'm really pleased with it. There was nothing about its performance that I was disappointed about. Uh, so I can't really give it anything else. You know, it's definitely, it's better than the Sherpa ever was, um, especially out of the box. I probably got it to a position where the Sherpa was a better climber, uh, but at that point I'd taken away some of its trailing abilities. Uh, it's better than the Gatekeeper, just, um, and I think it's on par with the Ecto 
albeit slightly different. So there we go, and it uh, yeah it knocks then it knocks the night runner out of the out of the park, uh, obviously, <laughs> but the night runner is a different beast. Uh, so yeah, five out of five it's getting for performance. Okay, next category is build and quality. So the build was quite complicated. It was quite difficult. If if you're coming to uh, the the crawler hobby and you want to build your first kit, this perhaps isn't the one. Or it's the one if you've got a lot of patience. I found it a little bit annoying and a little bit difficult to follow the manual sometimes. Uh, and also the way that they provide the hardware is baffling. Right, there's a huge baffling array of different screw sizes uh, and different types of hardware to put this thing together. They clearly, I think, I can't remember who it was. I've seen it on another review. Obviously, they had one department building axles, another department building gearboxes, and they all had different screw suppliers because they're all totally different. Some of them are hex head. Well, no, they're all hex head, actually. But some of them are socket, some of them are kind of button head, some of them are flat head, some of them are countersunk, some of them are set screws. Oh, you're forever changing them. And the way they do it is they put, uh, if you need, let's say, uh, on this thing there are 20 of uh, 20 mil by M3 button head screws. They give you a bag that's clearly marked up 20 times, uh, or well, you know, 20 by eight button head, uh, 20 by M3 button head. And that's fine, but then of course you use those at all different points towards the, to the build. So you're constantly looking back through probably about 30 different bags of hardware to try and find the size you need for that particular bit. That was really frustrating. <clears throat> but anyway, enough ranting about the screws. The instructions are okay, but they are a little bit tricky in places. There are some bits where you think, I'm not quite sure whether that's a plastic bushing or a, uh, or a bearing, or I'm not quite sure if I've got the right plastic bushing. And there is one that's very critical to the transmission um, where it just looks to all intents and purposes like the other uh, the other kind of 11 by 5 bushings um, but it does have a, a little lip on it so if you build one of these look out for that the the RC Scotsman I think is the guy's name he's he's done a few videos on his uh, G-Made Komodo which is obviously the same chassis and he had a he had he had some woes shall we say uh, with the transmission and he's tracked it down and thinks it's to do with that single bushing They're, they look so similar and if you don't put the right one in at the right in the right place um, you get a bit of slop in the transmission and that's probably enough to cause that problem. I do like the transmission. I think the transmission's really clever. Uh, so that's kind of two-speed transmission with the overdrive built in uh, and with the counter-rotating out drives. It's great. Really, really good transmission. The all-metal gears are good. Um, they feel like they're going to be pretty reliable. Fingers crossed for those diff. Uh, gears that's a, a big thing so my score for build and quality is going to be a three and that is because of those flipping screws uh, and the slightly unclear in some places instructions um, and then just a few niggles that I've had that I have about the quality of the build next section cost or value for money um, I think on par, it's on par, I think, with some of the cheaper Axial kits. So this kit was, in the UK, £350. That's probably about $380 to $400. But I have seen it for about $350 uh, in the US. That takes it just out of the budget price range, I think. So that's as expensive, I think, as my most expensive element truck, which was the Night Runner. Um, the Ecto and the Gatekeeper both came in quite a little way under that. And of course you've got to add your electronics to that as well. You haven't got to add tyres, so there's a money saving there, but you probably will have to buy some wheels. So in terms of cost and value, is it on par? I mean, it's on par with the cheap, the cheaper TRX4. So it's cheap, you know, it's on par roughly, I think, with the TRX4 Sport, maybe a little bit cheaper than that. Um, and again, like I say, some of the cheaper axial kits but what are you getting for that, I think, is, is more. You're getting the two-speed transmission. You're getting that clever counter-rotating um, out drives. You're getting that forward motor mount. So I think, on, on balance, I think it's pretty good value for what you get. It's certainly getting more than you do with the 
element trucks because they just come with a single speed transmission um, you know pretty basic really uh, and of course you are getting the overdrive in there as well so good tyres the foams that it comes with for the tyres were shocking <laughs> they were really bad I mean is <laughs> that always seems like a bit of a I don't know, a bit of an easy one to sort out really, and, and a low cost thing to fix as well. I've put some um, Club 5 Racing dual stage foams in here that I had uh, from when I bought my first set of uh, Louise Champs some time ago. Uh, and I like them actually, they've got enough give. Um, the tyres are not vented, so there's a little bit of squish in there. Um, but the, the foams they come with are utter junk, absolutely rubbish. Uh, like I say, it comes with overdrive out the box. The wheel arch line is in a fenders, whatever you want to call them. That's a nice idea. And they're a good tough plastic as well, actually. So they're okay. I'm quite happy with those. And it does come with the light buckets, which is good, because then you just got to plug in some cheap LEDs, and that's, that's a really easy job. I actually did buy um, a little uh, RC switcher to go in there, which just fits nicely on top of the receiver inside that. Um, receiver box so hopefully it's protected from the elements so I can switch the lights on and off from the radio so overall sort of cost and value I am going to give that a four star rating uh, and I think that's fair you know it's not the cheapest out there but it is nowhere near the most expensive and you are getting a good feature set I think for the money so overall score overall score is a four out of five and I think that's about I think that's about right, you know? I think I would give that a four out of five. There's a few flaws, there's a few things that could be improved on it. Mostly around the suspension, actually. I don't think, I don't think any of the other flaws are that big a deal. Um, you know, the mirrors, okay, if the mirrors break off, the mirrors break off, it's not the end of the world. If the diff gears start to play up, that might be, that might be something that I'll, would make me want to change the score but as it stands at the moment mine are fine so i can't i can't uh, i can't mark it down for those yet uh will i revisit maybe i'll revisit the scores uh later um if they do give up but like i say i think things you could improve are definitely um it could come with some better wheels out the box one thing i am quite impressed with like i say with these trio wheels they're really really nice quality and they're not that much more expensive than the the kind of cheap chanquish rip-offs that I've been buying off Amazon and things. They, they they seem to be around £40 a set now. And I think these were 55 plus postage. So it's not that far away and they're definitely better quality. They went together beautifully. The tyres um, mounted onto the beadlocks really easily. You know, very impressed with those. I know they didn't come with a truck, but... Just giving it out there while I'm talking. Um, I think it could do with slightly sh slower suspension. Like I say, I think there's no, there's kind of no sync to that, um, to that suspension currently. It's just si sitting almost, almost at the top of its travel. Um, there's a little bit, but not a lot, and certainly there's none in the back. So I think you know that needs some slightly softer springs, and I think it needs. Um, maybe some thicker oil there's definitely some tuning to be done there and the lights and the interior you know it could have come with those but it didn't so I'll put my own in so there we go that's it really it's a four out of five in my opinion uh, the G-Made GS02F bomb overall though I am very happy with it I can see me driving this a lot um, just because it's a good all-rounder, uh, you know, it trails well, it crawls really pretty well for something of its size. I could always take the spare wheel off the back and it would probably crawl even better because there'd be a bit of extra weight out the top. Uh, but all in all, really pleased with it, very glad I bought it. I'm going to flip over to some running video. Uh, this is at my usual test spot. It is uh, on the Element wheels, not the trail ones, uh, but it is these tyres uh, and they did come off the bead a couple of times uh, but I couldn't be bothered to keep fixing them so I just kind of ran it with them off the bead a little bit uh, and it was still really good um, so very pleased with that um, so we'll cut over to some of that running footage now uh, and you can have a look and see for yourselves 
Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you found that video useful and helpful. If you are looking at a GSFO2, whatever it is, GSO2F bomb or any of the, uh, the O2F platforms, I think a four out of five means I would probably recommend it. I think it's, it's, it's a good truck. If it's your first build, maybe not, but you know, who's to say? Uh, it just means you're gonna have to have a little bit more patience. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Uh, we will be back shortly. I'm gonna upgrade the suspension. I've already got the softer springs, as you can imagine. Um, probably no surprise to anybody that I've already done that. Uh, we'll get that upgraded, we'll get it out for another run, and we'll see if that's made any difference. And uh, you can bet I will let you know. Thanks for watching.